farming, food and fashion for a discerning world is serious business in Aotearoa, New Zealand. There are new opportunities everywhere just waiting for the open-minded. Sarah's Country shines a light on the matters that matter most. And here's your host, Sarah Periam. Kia ora and welcome to Sarah's Country's Changemaker where we've got a very special edition for you uh, from the South Island Agricultural Field Days at Kui. We've taken the team on the road um, with me, Tessa Prentice, Editorial Producer for Sarah's Country, has been searching for some uh, great changemakers to feature because it's great to be able to get out Tess, and actually see uh, these innovative solutions in the flesh, but it's also really interesting to see what catches people's attention as well. So you have selected uh, for us four change makers that we're gonna talk about, go and visit throughout the show. But before that, you've also been on the Serious Country stand here in the farmlands tent uh, doing our survey. And we've had like, we're nearly at two, two, 300, 300 entries. Yeah, it's going really well. It's been such an awesome opportunity to come out here and um, sort of get the general consensus of what everyone's feeling and their thoughts towards Sarah's country and how they consume that media. Um, so my job, I've been uh, walking around the field days, uh, mostly based here in the farmland's tent, um, doing a quick survey um, to sort of work out what people are, you know, leaning towards, and we've what, definitely noticed. What sort of noticed, things do they like? Yeah, we've definitely noticed that the change maker that we're filming here today is a real hot, hot one, and um, people are really enjoying learning about all the new innovative ideas. And also, when it comes to the way they consume it, is being through the podcast has been really, really popular. And SeriousCountry.com. Yeah, yeah, fantastic! It's so great, and of course, we're going to give away the Honest Wolf bag. Uh, well, after Easter, I think, Tessa, because it let those entries continue to roll in over the Easter period. We really want to ensure the direction of Sarah's country uh, is, of course, an alliance with how you want uh, to that in terms of where it is and the content, etc. So. Uh, we need to let you know about the really cool change makers that Tessa has selected uh, from around South Island Agricultural Field Days that we're going to catch up with this week. Tessa? Yep, so obviously there are so many awesome people here with all their um, innovative ideas and solutions for farming, um, but some of the four top ones that we've decided to go ahead with was um, Katie Barr, she's the owner and operator of Grass Co. Um, and then we had Jeff Denley from Carfields on um, drip line irrigation systems. And Ben Anderson, he is the um, from Summit and Steel. And also um, Steve Crowhurst, the business development manager for Halter. Yeah, so, so many incredible people. It was really cool catching up with uh, those four. In interesting talking about virtual fencing with Halter, uh, right through to a really cool uh, fencing implement that Summit and Steel have come out. You definitely need to check this out if you uh, seriously don't like fencing and you want to make life a lot easier. But what Holt is doing too, Tessa, it's incredible where technology is going uh, in farming. It must be awesome for attracting uh, young people into the sector, seeing these types of technologies around. Oh, definitely. I think Holt is an incredible startup business. And actually, one of my friends from primary school, would you believe, is um, they're working for, for Holter, and it's um, just so many new innovative ideas and a great team and yeah, so cool to have them here on site and get yeah. to know them yeah. and, and, and really understand what they do and how they can make yeah, fencing and farming more simple and yeah, easier. And to making life simple, Katie Barr we caught up from Grassco, an inspiring young woman um, getting into a pasture metering. It's definitely incredible, but I really enjoyed my time at Carfields. Subsoil irrigation, huge part of the future, I believe, particularly in Canterbury. Uh, so we've, we're covering it all. It's extremely practical inventions. Everything from fencing to irrigation to pasture metering. Uh, not all the fancy pantsy apps here on, on Changemaker. These are change makers that I can see practically implemented on farms within the next 12 months. So sit back and enjoy uh, the rest of uh, Changemaker. Up next, we will be starting off with Katie Barr from Grassco. This is Sarah's Country. Catch the latest on the matters that matter most wherever you are. Listen to Sarah's Country on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple or Google Podcasts. Try asking Alexa or Siri. Play Sarah's Country on podcast. 
Oh, nice boots. Yeah, thanks. They're new. <laughs> ben. Ben, you alright? Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Just me getting pretty hardy. Eh? Yeah. I just said to myself, Ben, work hard. You deserve new boots. Well, in our first Changemaker interview, uh, live here from the South Island Agricultural Field Days at Kuwi, uh, we asked for your nominations to send in for where we should go around the field days and find some change makers. Uh, kicking off is a wonderful young lady based uh, south of Ashburton, uh, franchising a very cool, unique solution in terms of uh, pasture monitoring. I'm here with Katie Barr from Grassco. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Katie. This is a really cool concept. So. Let's talk about the traditional uh, what method of measuring pasture and then how this solution differs. Absolutely. So a lot of people still um, plate meter or they may have their own CDEX machine that they buzz around with. Um, but obviously with that you've got to lose a staff member for a few hours or whatever. Um, so that's one staff member down. Whereas I'll come onto the property discreet as, you won't even know I'm there. Buzz around your place um, nice and quickly but efficiently. Um, I'll also check on different things while I'm going around. So if I see like... Um, of water pipes burst or something like that, I'll text that through to you let you know. So I'm not just there just to measure grass, but I'll also be the eyes of the farm as well. Um, so I'll get that done and then within a, the same day you'll get an email once I've left the property um, with a full data um, email, yeah, with an email with all your data on it, with all your paddock, so you can have your feed wedge, you can see what's growing, what's not, and we track it over the, over the season, so by the end of the season um, you can see which paddocks aren't performing, which ones are, yeah, that sort of thing. And as I mentioned, it is a franchise, so how did you become involved with Grassco? So I uh, met Donald a few years ago down in Southland, so it's Donald and Andrew and Martin down in Southland. Uh, they've been up and running for the last 13 or so years, um, so they've produce this awesome uh, business. Um, so I worked for them for a few months and then moved back to Canterbury last year and was like, oh my God, there's a massive hole in the market up here for it. Um, so I just approached them and was like, hey, wanna sort something out? So we've come to an agreement and um, yeah, so now we're up and operational in Canterbury, which is awesome. I've got some technical questions. I'm thinking, okay, so how many hectares can you cover and what type of uh, time, and what to the, in terms of you were saying the reports turned around so quickly, yeah. uh, what, what sort of results are you seeing in the efficiencies for the farmers that you're working with already? Um, well, obviously they're not having to put out a staff member, um, but yeah, like one place I've gone to, he didn't even measure his grass before I came along. Um, so paddocks that he thought were going pretty good, obviously now he's got a quantitative measure each week with a, a fit, yeah, like your data. Um, and he's now saying that some paddocks that he thought were performing just really aren't. <laughs> so now he'll be able to turn those around, irrigate, put more fertiliser on those ones, get them back into the round and growing properly. So weekly is how often you would contract and yes. over what part of the seasons? Yep, so weekly, um, pretty much all year round, apart from the winter obviously when you're not growing. Um, once you've dried off you might want a last minute pasture cover just to see what you've dried off with. Um, and then one week before the season kicks off just to get those covers so you can see what you're going into in your first round. I bet you there's a lot of innovative Canterbury farmers that are saying what else you could bolt on yeah, and yeah. their development <laughs> of sensors and technology. Absolutely. Where would, could it potentially go? Oh look, the opportunities are endless in that um, department. Um, I've already started thinking of a few but I've got to get my client base up and make it, <laughs> try to start making money off this machine first um, and then I'll work on those bolt-ons afterwards. And also too we talk a lot about the big data in farming um, but it's always as good as how it can integrate with other systems. Uh, how are some farmers utilising that by um, plugging it in to make those better management decisions? Yeah so obviously you get your data each week. Um, doesn't at this stage bolt on to too many other systems but obviously going forward I can definitely look into that um, but yeah so they're just being able to cut silage with confidence they know what's out there they're not doing it by eye and going oh I think we should be all right and then finding that they actually they've got to go and feed that silage out like a week later or anything like that um, yeah so they can feed the confidence feed the cows with confidence basically so uh, for those who are listening along effectively grass co is a plant 
plate meter for dry matter um, levels and, and pasture quality, but on a trailer behind a truck so you can get through uh, very efficiently. And uh, there is a video that you can actually see this in action as well. Where can people learn more information, Katie? Um, so we've got a website, www.grassco.co.nz. I've also got a Facebook page now, so Grassco Canterbury, you'll find us there. Um, yeah, so check us out on those ones. Yeah. Fantastic. Katie is certainly, definitely uh, worthy of being our very first change maker here at South Island Agricultural Field Days at Kiwi. And we're going to head off next down to the Carfields tent uh, where I've been keeping an eye on for the last couple of years, but the development has continued in subsoil irrigation. This is a drip line uh, under the root system and it's very big overseas, but yet to blow up here in New Zealand. We'll be talking to Jeff from Carfields up here shortly on Sarah's Country's Changemaker. This is Sarah's Country. Catch the latest on the matters that matter most wherever you are. Listen to Sarah's Country on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple or Google Podcasts. Try asking Alexa or Siri. Play Sarah's Country on podcast. One of the first things you learn when you live out here is where to shop and the things you need to live out here. Like electric fencing. Oh, safe. Or bee suits. Shield bench. Chuck food. Do you want a couple of these? Or something stylish to wear. Not everyone's got stuff like this. But in farmlands we do, and then some. So if you need anything to help your farm... Grow. Milk. Dredge. Rear. Come on in. Because we're out here too. Carrying on in Serious Country's Changemaker, coming from the South Island Field Days here at Kirwi, uh, is a irrigation development that I've been following for some time. It, it has been uh, quite big around the world, but starting to take off here in New Zealand thanks to Carfields Irrigation. We've got Jeff Denley here, uh, Business Development Manager for Carfields Irrigation, and Gary Robinson, owner of the machine, the subsoil irrigation machine, uh, who also has experience with it on his own property. Uh, uh, Gary, I'll start with you. What's your, been your involvement and what sparked your interest initially to get into subsoil irrigation? Yeah, well, um, Jeff had actually brought the machine in from America and um, I met Jeff and basically we've sort of teamed up with the Carfields team and um, me and my wife, Penny, we went over to America, to California and, um, yeah, we went over there and seen it being used in the dairies industry over there and, um, yeah, we just got more and more excited about it and then we knew it was working in America, so we thought we'd bring the technology to New Zealand, put it into a system on my farm, and um, get, sort of get some data from it, and get some results, and so far so good. Yeah, it's been really great. Fantastic. Uh, Jeff. let's talk about the efficiencies and why you would go down the track of burying your irrigation effectively. Well, the main, one of the main advantages is the water savings. The um, efficiency of it will be uh, be able to save 25 to 40 percent water and irrigate the same amount of land. So what would be what you can do is stretch your available water over larger areas of land. And the main main driver is the efficiency of it. It's it's 95 to 100 percent efficient. It's not affected by the uh, by the wind. You've no ver no evaporation, less weed growth. There's so many mm. benefits from the subsurface drip compared to the uh, spray and flood irrigation that we're doing now. Mm, yeah. That's a very valid point about uh, weeds as well. Now Gary, what benefits have you seen? Tangible uh, benefits in terms of yield uh, and just general pasture management from having water underground? Yeah, well, so we've taken a dry land paddock that was possibly sort of growing eight tonne a year. Now, we've more than doubled that now. So, you know, we've taken a dry land paddock, paddock we've made it more um, productive, if you will, and I just had extra water so I had a bit of a void to fill, so we took that water, done this two hectares, and um, here yeah, the, gra the, the grass has really sort of responded to it. Basically, you're always spoon feeding the um, plant, and the plant is never at stress point, it's always got moisture there. Therefore, if your soil temperature's 12 and rising, you're always going to be growing grass. Mm. Yeah. And of, of course, in Canterbury, uh, Jeff, you know, nitrate leaching is a of, of grave concern, especially with freshwater regulations uh, coming in and putting pressure on Canterbury farmers. So, how can subsoil irrigation help farmers with that? Well, it, if if we can add uh, fertigation directly into the uh, 
subsurface drip irrigation as well, then we're only putting on enough nitrogen, enough that day or every few days for the plants to use. So very efficient use, once again, of your fertiliser. Yeah, and you've also got a soil moisture probe here in the Carfields um, site. And tying those two together would be extremely efficient for measuring what's going on in a bigger picture. Yes, indeed. That's, the, that's one of the best ways to monitor what's going on with your subsurface drip. Having soil moisture probes in the ground, basically you, can, you can't see it from the surface, but you can see it from underneath through the soil moisture probes. Have you had any complications? I mean, playing devil's advocate, either in terms of uh, the putting it in, Yep. or uh, maintenance afterwards? Yeah, I'd like to be honest with you, we've done the install and basically it was plug and go. We, you know, we've done the install, put all the connections in, put the water into it, and um, yeah, we did, honestly we didn't have any problems at all. So it was a great result. Um, the, more, the more interesting thing is we've sort of, is about managing it. Um, we're on a Darnley soil, so we worked out how much water, how many days we need to water for, and what time periods are going to suit that um, soil, soil quantity, so yeah. Mm. And Jeff, um, Gary brings up a valid point there around design for the right uh, soil profile. It yeah. wouldn't be perfect for every soil though, would no, it? No, it's not perfect for every soil, Sarah. It's, um, it is very soil specific. It's got to be at the, uh, at, at the right, right uh, application rate to suit that soil. And um, we've tried it initially on some freer draining soils and it wouldn't work as well on lighter soils, but good good, good quality soils, that works very well. Fantastic, yeah. especially where uh, plugging may be an issue as well and to prevent that from on the top. Yes. Um, but uh, I suppose my audience at Serious Country, you know, they, uh, they do, don't like to talk about the gorse in their pockets and they like to question, oh, it's a great idea, Sarah, but how much is this really going to cost and stack up in regards to others? You've you found that it's, you know, relatively and when you, in terms of the efficiency gains at the other end as well? Yeah, I mean, we've taken dry land and, you know, we've, we've turned it into a more productive land and I've taken water that I, I wouldn't have enough water to use to have a pivot, but I can take that water, spread it further. Mm. So it's all about production, basically, yes. It is uh, quite cost comparative compared to fixed grid irrigation, so sprinklers on posts in the corners. It really suits longer, squarer, rectangular shaped paddocks. It, um, we can use it for infill for corners for irrigation pivots. Yes. Yeah, and we're also finding, you know, we're taking that labour unit out of it as well, mm. shifting K line, etc. Um, I can turn mine on from my phone, and that's obviously I've got a um, moisture probe in the ground so I can find out when I need to be watering and when I don't need to be watering. And it's basically just a push of a button on an app on my phone and away you go. And, yeah. and of course with big capital infrastructure outlay, how long is this going to last and what's sort of that uh, budgeting period of time for, for capital outlay? It, uh, it, it's been proven to be working in the ground now for over 20 years and even through wastewater applications, it's been working for that long as well. The key to it is getting the uh, filtration right and the management right, and it's gonna last you longer than a centre pivot. Fantastic, we've got Jeff Dunley there from Carfield's Irrigation Business Development Manager, and Gary Robinson, who actually owns the subsoil machine here, farming himself as well with his wife near Cust. Now coming up in Serious Country's Changemaker, uh, we're going to head to catch up with the team at Halter. Now you may be familiar with the collars around cows. There has been some more development as well as the fact that Halter have taken out one of the Innovation Awards here at South Island Field Days. So we'll be catching up with Steve Crother, uh, the Business Development Manager, up next here on Serious Country. This is Sarah's Country. Join the conversation. Have thoughts on an interview? Or have you got questions you want answered by a future guest? Let us know. Email Sarah at sarahscountry.com. South Island Agricultural Field Days, taking the AgriMagic Smart Farming Award was Halter. 
Uh, if you're not familiar with Halter, uh, we have the business development manager standing right here on site as part of the Serious Country Changemaker this week. Steve uh, Crowhurst is, is with us. Maybe potentially setting the scene for those who aren't up with what is Halter. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, so with Halter, you effectively um, fit each cow with a collar. Uh, that's paired with a smartphone app. Uh, and that allows you to um, physically, uh, remotely shift your cows, uh, virtually fence your cows and monitor your cows all remotely. Fantastic. So a huge part of the future of New Zealand's farming, uh, particularly with a lot of freshwater regulations. How can that, that benefit uh, with, with fitting into a new system of farming? Yeah, uh, sure. I guess there's a number of ways that uh, farmers can mitigate um, some of the compliance uh, regulations coming in. Um, it starts with being able to uh, move your cows uh, whenever you like. So basically if you have a weather event coming through, you're able to uh, move the cows off uh, vulnerable land um, to, the, to the feed pad or, or to another spot where you're going to re reduce the runoff uh, into streams. Um, it also obviously looks after the, the paddocks a bit more to prevent pugging. Um, and then obviously with virtual fencing you have this complete flexibility um, or, or, or how you fence your cows relative to the waterway. So hey, let's say it's three metres today, uh, some, some weather's coming through, let's pull that back ten metres or exclude them from certain parts of the paddock. So complete flexibility to manage the, the, the stock relative to where the water is in vulnerable areas. Are. And farmers getting really creative with the use of it and the concept of, uh, you know, scheduling shifts and yes. things like that. Yes, so obviously if we can uh, shift cows remotely, uh, we've just built a, a new feature where you can preset your shifts. Yeah. Uh, so that sort of just allows farmers to completely automate cow movements around the farm. Um, so for tomorrow, we can basically pre-schedule pre our shift to the cow shed or shift to other breaks, and it really just flips um, the operational structure on farm on its head and allows farmers to focus on other tasks and strategy rather than shifting their cows throughout the day. This is an absolute game changer for labour on farm and also farmers getting their life back, particularly on winter crops. Mm. Uh, what sort of transformational change have you seen uh, in the farmers that you're working with and, and, and how it's impacting their business and their lifestyle? Yeah, we know farmers work incredible hours uh, and Halter just, without, with, within two weeks of having the system on the farm, you know, essentially all your um, fencing that you have to put up, temporary fencing, is gone um, and all the shifting uh, to and from the shed in between breaks is gone. So it reduces workload depending on the season between one and four hours a day um, and that's significant for a lot of farmers. It means they can work more sustainable hours mm. if that's possible with farming. Um, it means they can focus on strategy rather than these, these lower value operational tasks essentially and it just gives them a, a whole new array of options to really think about how to optimise the farm um, rather than just try and get through the day uh, to get all the tasks done. I understand that the collars are more than just fencing. There's also um, I mean, animal health monitoring has uh, got a huge future. Yep. Um, yep. How is Holter adapting that with cow health? Yeah, so everyone sort of assumes that we just uh, remotely shift and virtually fence cows, but a big part of the collar is uh, the activity monitoring. Mm -hmm. So we monitor every aspect of the cow's activity. And what that allows us to do is establish a baseline behaviour of every cow and then we look for changes in her behaviour uh, relative to that baseline and those changes are either they're used to alert the farmer to a sick cow uh, or obviously used for heat detection, lameness detection and, and other health ailments that, that might pop up. So it's really about uh, really high fidelity monitoring of the cow movement uh, in real time. And, uh, and proactively letting the farmers know if there's a, there's a, a, a problem with the cow and uh, getting there nice and early to, to sort her out. Fantastic. Yeah. It's incredible. The growth of Halter since uh, I've been following the progress for a couple of years now. Uh, and, I mean, where are you, where are you 20, 2021 as a business yep. uh, expanding into? Yeah, so we are launching across farms in the Waikato. Yeah. Uh, and that's going really well. And we just more and more farms are... Uh, uh, deployed with Halter technology and obviously we're down here at the wonderful uh, South Island Agricultural Field Days and um, we're naturally looking to expand into other areas, uh, hence why we're down here talking to the, the Canterbury farmers 
So Canterbury is the next market. What about beef? How close are we spending in more into beef? So the the technology uh, obviously applies um, to to any mammal. So uh, we're able to um, apply this this technology to dry stock and beefies as well. Uh, we haven't. Um, effectively gone into that area just yet but it shouldn't be too much of a change um, from what we're doing now and it's the natural progression I, I guess yeah and also economies of scale bringing the cost of collars down and, 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 and implementing on farm what's your business yeah strategy? well a really really important thing about what we do here is provide value for the farmer mm. so uh, what they put in for halter has to uh, give them a return and uh, it's obviously got to be economically viable uh, and that's what we're establishing for our dairy farmers and then uh, obviously we'll look at modelling how that looks for dry stock who have um, probably different functionality than or obviously different functionality than a dairy farm and uh, making sure that it's an economically viable option there and you know farmers, those dry stock farmers are faced with huge fencing costs and, and uh, making sure they keep their cows in, or dry stock out of water and uh, we can provide a solution there. Yeah, and that's the thing is you've got an expensive high country property uh, that may have a mob of 200 cows. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of putting collars on as opposed to fencing off waterways in back, the back country, it really does stack up. Oh, I, I guess in some places you, you can't actually put a post in the ground. It's too, it's too rocky or oh, too hard. Oh, in Central, hard, so. they just get dynamite. Locked. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. So, so yeah, there's definitely other tools that farmers uh, can use and, and we're obviously one of those other tools. And it's just really about letting the farmers in Southland and around the rest of New Zealand yes. know uh, what's possible with halter collars um, and they have some, some amazing flexibility to optimise their farming operation. So if you're listening and you're going into break feeding in the Southland winter, think and dream about having halter collars and you're laying in bed and doing it off your phone. I, I guess break feeding and, and winter crop feeding um, can, you know, as we said before with the pre-schedule pre shifts, mm. that can happen in the background. Um, if you like, you're welcome to open up the phone and have a look at the app just to make sure that the girls are on the way to and from the break. But uh, hey, let's put all that workload behind behind you and focus on what matters on the farm. It's incredible. So the growth of your business, every time I catch up with you, your team's expanding. Where to from now? Yes, so big expansion this year. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, roles open to join the company. Um, I can personally say it's, it's a pretty amazing um, company and product to be involved in. Um, really really inspiring with some amazing people there and uh, we have opportunities uh, right across the company from data scientists, engineers, hardware engineers, software engineers right through to our field team uh, and our business development team so if there's any uh, cool. budding um, talent out there that looking for a, an amazing opportunity they should, should definitely get in touch. Awesome, absolutely. Future proofing farms in New Zealand. Congratulations, not only uh, on your business growth, but on the Agri Magic Smart Farming Award won here at the South Island Agricultural Field Days. Uh, congratulations, it's uh, always such a pleasure to catch up and see the growth of Halter. Uh, that's Steve Crowhurst, the Business Development Manager from Halter. Now coming up to close, Sarah's Country's Changemaker. Uh, something I've seen turn many farmers' heads here at the Field Days. It may be simple, but it's going to bring down huge labour costs in fencing. Uh, up next here with Summit, Steel and Wires, Solo Net. This is Sarah's Country. Catch the latest on the matters that matter most wherever you are. Listen to Sarah's Country on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple or Google Podcasts. Try asking Alexa or Siri. Play Sarah's Country on podcast. Australia and New Zealand are home to some of the world's most innovative farming pioneers. Zomatic is proud to partner with farmers who are committed to leading the way in sustainable water management. The Trailblazer Sustainable Irrigation Awards celebrate sustainable irrigation management, irrigation-driven improvements, waterway protection and environmental stewardship. See how our trailblazers are leading the way at irrigationtrailblazer.com winners. 
Well, we've just heard around virtual fencing with Halter on Serious Country's Changemaker. But if you're not quite there yet and you're more interested in the real thing, well, we're here with Summit Steel and Wire. And I have Ben Anderson, uh, the key account manager for rural and export from Summit Steel and Wire with me uh, here at the South Island Agricultural Field Days. Um, ben, it's been a really interesting 12 months, hasn't it, for uh, fencing infrastructure, getting supplies, etc. Can you sort of share the last the journey with us? Yeah, that's it. The last 12 months has certainly been challenging. Um, I think with all the COVID and stuff and lockdowns, everyone turned back to what they can get done around the, around the farm. Um, so we've certainly seen an increase going on, which has definitely put um, pressure on manufacturing and supply chains. Mm. Um, so it's definitely um, presented a few problems, but lots of opportunities to think outside the box and solve them too. Yeah, fantastic. So New Zealand made manufactured uh, netting rolls, fencing wire, and a lot of people are familiar with the traditional product. But the reason why we're catching up with Ben in Summit Steel and Wire is the invention that I've seen a lot of farmers stop and turn their heads at, which is right behind us, which is the solo net. Um, ben, can you explain the story behind how this came about? Yes, yeah, so, um, we're New Zealand's largest exporter, um, and so in the world we kind of um, we like to think we're what the Swiss art of watches, where Kiwis are of fencing. Um, <laughs> and what we've seen lately, there's been a lot of angst around freshwater policy reforms, um, rising costs and things like that around fencing um, properties. So we've been using and um, talking to our export customers and bringing back the information from overseas. Um, and this is one here, uh, it was invented by a Kiwi guy uh, in the UK called um, Simon. Um, and this is a solo net that's um, used for putting large rolls of fence on joining them together and um, reducing labour time and manual handling for fences on farm. So basically you're putting these two rolls on here and bending that back so yeah, you can it. actually pull out and lay it out. That's it, so it saves time, uh, less manual handling, so that tractor can pick this up, pick the rolls up off the ground without actually lifting them. Um, you don't need to join the bigger rolls together, which saves time um, getting on the ground and um, straining up each roll. And then this one here, the straining board on each side, can switch around depending on what side of fence you're doing and it actually can strain the whole thing in seconds rather than um, taking minutes and like manually pulling the chain strainer or a straining board. Um, the other thing, what we can do is you can run it through backwards, so if you're on a really steep country, you can actually roll the whole um, fence down and then just strain it backwards instead of having to um, carry fence and lugging it down steep terrain. Well, I know that our viewers and listeners in Serious Country, they're very, very practical people and they will understand this uh, down to a T. And I mean, the thing is, is that we're seeing huge labour shortages in the fencing contracting business. Yep. Uh, and so therefore, anything to help, what, what your contractors must love this. Yeah, that's it. And um, part of the sort of challenges we talked about in labour shortages and um, costs and extra work coming on, we've sort of been working with farmlands and putting together our preferred installers for each region. And we all the new products we're testing, like um, these solo nets and some other um, things, we bounce off these guys who are all FCANs accredited and things. And we've actually been giving these out to them to test in the market. So they've been in the market for quite a while, but only now we're getting ready to um, put them into use and start um, advertising them, selling them through farmlands. So when this particular unit, would a contractor buy this or is it um, approachable into price-wise for anyone do, doing general fencing around the property? Yeah, when you think about the kit a contractor has, um, it's very... Um, price comparative, it's very cheap compared to a lot of the tractor and the pole driver and things like that. Mm. Uh, what we found is um, regionally contractors might grab one for themselves if they're big enough or in groups and just share it depending on um, the work that they're doing at the time. Um, yeah. An absolute game changer if you're buying a property to develop, you certainly uh, want to get one of these uh, for sure. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favourite things I've actually seen here, yeah. and I'm not a fencer, yeah. um, but I can, I've seen the struggles and the challenges um, over the time, of, and particularly with freshwater regulations, so many more areas needing to be fenced off. It's yeah, really that's a game changer. it. Um, no one generally looks forward to doing fencing on their property, and um, especially this one, the, in the right circumstances, we're having a 40% reduction in time. Um, for putting up um, long runs of fencing and things and um, the work it's cutting out is the hard labour um, which is definitely the problem at the moment with shortages and things like that so it's definitely making the job a lot easier for everyone involved. Fantastic, thank you so much. Ben Anderson from Summit Steel & Wire joining us here to close Serious Country's Changemaker. Uh, it's been an incredible day at South Island Agricultural Field Days at Kui. Back in two years time there's been an increase in crowds and uh, incredible the amount of different innovative solutions that are here. Obviously representative of the fact that uh, we have some challenges 
challenges collectively as an industry and if we do work to come together around them we can solve them. I'm blown away by the Kiwi ingenuity here on display and uh, may it continue uh, into the future as well. That's all we've got time for on this week's Serious Country Changemaker and we'll be back uh, next week with more of your innovative solutions happening across the primary sector here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. In the meantime, take care of yourself and your loved ones. Ka kite anō. Oh,